showed me nations so let's say you're coming from a nation in south america a nation in north america a nation in africa a nation in asia a nation in middle east or in europe let's say he uses a, as a person as a representative of that nation he showed me person of a nation of nations actually people coming from different nations but these nations were being tempted or they've been under temptation and they've been making deals with Satan because he does offer delicious package deals, if I can say that. If you give up this, I'm going to give you this. If you give up this, much like what happened to Jesus in the desert. It's not that it happened just to Jesus. It happens to nations. It happens to leaders. It happens to normal people that we would think had got no influence. He will tempt you to give over something that is so important but you don't realize it's an exchange Remember what it did to jesus in the desert he says like if you turn this into bread and then jesus had to stand on the word and says but it is written man can't live on bread alone the exchange what was the exchange there the exchange is jesus you're going to give up your autonomy and then in my bidding you're going to go and accuse god God, why aren't you turning this into bread? Because I want to eat now. I'm hungry. To see that exchange there. So often we come into exchanges like that. It's a simple fact that you are a human being and you've been created by God because all people have been created by God. But it is up to us to choose him because he has given us the free will to do that. Satan will come and try to get you to exchange things. Similar with uh, gifts and talents. I don't know if I want to talk about that now. Maybe I could talk about that a bit later. Let me go back to the nations. But this nation is meeting the devil and the devil is giving them the temptation of, listen, you would go so much further with technology. You can go so much further if you let go of morality, if you let go of your values. These things are holding you back. The, what's holding you back is you caring about what your people are eating, are they sleeping well? Are they working well? Why do you care? It's got to be a sacrifice for the greater good. These are the temptations given them. So this nation or these nations, Satan is saying, um, I'm going to give you this, but if you want to go far. You've got to sacrifice something to get far. This nation gave over the Bible as a sacrifice, as an exchange. They gave over the word of God as an exchange. And this is holding us back. As far as development, as far as evolution of the people's concerned, this is holding us back. Note, guys, God teaches us how to even treat other people in the world. Murder is wrong. Child sacrifice is wrong. Child trafficking is wrong. Human trafficking is wrong. Slavery is wrong. These things we get from the word. You can't get these things from Satan. Satan will say, do those things for the greater good. He would say the exact opposite. So when you give over the word of God for what Satan has for you, because he has no truth in him. No, remember when Jesus said to Satan, he is the father of lies. He has no truth in him. He was like in the desert when I was being tempted and Satan is using the same word that I know, the same word to tempt me with. Jesus, do you know why I didn't falter? I was like, why, why didn't you falter? He says, because he doesn't stand on the word. He's got no truth. So when he speaks, his speaking is using you and me and anybody else as a pawn. In his mind, you are a pawn to be moved around the chessboard. So I can use the same things you believe in, whether it be family, whether it be your country, whether it be your people, whether it be the same Bible, things that you love. I can use those things and turn them against you so that you can give up your position. So when Jesus says he's got no truth in him, it's true. He's got no truth in him. He speaks on both sides of his mouth. He'll say one thing, still go to heaven and go accuse you as if he wasn't there making all these plans to destroy you and tempting you with evil. In, in this vision, the nations give uh, the Bible over and Satan is laughing. But almost like a magic trick, he had nothing. Not even a rabbit came out of the hat. It was nothing. But people gave up the most important thing. But do they know that the, the, the word of God is really part of our foundation? That 
that's where we know about the rock of salvation. That's where we know about the foundation of Jesus Christ, why we need Jesus Christ as the foundation. All I heard in my spirit, the Holy Spirit saying that the rock that the builders rejected became the cornerstone. What you are rejecting is the cornerstone, the cornerstone of your, your faith. That's what you're rejecting. If you believe in nothing, you will fall for anything. All the doctrines that are coming in are going to come and rampage your countries and your cities. Do not reject the word of God. Do not reject him. If it's still in circulation, it still gives you the opportunity to know where to repent, to know where to cry for. When people are in distress, you say, Lord, it's humanly impossible to fix some of the things, the mistakes that we have made from generations because we live in generational curses, whether the generational curse of slavery, the generational curse of colonialism, generational curse of war. We are born into things like that. Now, it may not have been your fault, but you know, it was somebody that did it before you. You have to now live with those rules and roofs and when you pray and you're like lord this stuff is hindering us please help us you can go to the lord and repent and stand in the gap for your countries nations your cities and leaders themselves you can do this you can sit and present your nations to god as leaders and say lord as much as i've been in this position i cannot do it without your wisdom i can't do it in my own strength as you see solomon crying out to god wonderful leaders were doing great they thought they were doing great without God, and then problems happen, and they run into God. Ahab included. Ahab, knowing that the judgments of God were happening, he's the first to run and repent. So we need people that are in places of leadership, that are still standing on the word of God. Ask Holy Spirit to give you understanding. This is why the baptism of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name is important in our lives. told me that if they... You've got the word of God, but you don't know what to do with the word of God. You're sitting and this doesn't make sense to you. If you are looking at it and you're saying you don't understand it, ask the Lord to baptize you in his spirit, to baptize you in the spirit of truth, because that's the one thing Satan doesn't have is the truth. Mind he doesn't have Jesus or anything. The things that are happening now with the shifts in things, we will need to know where we can run to. There is no other place that we can run to. If you look at in the book of Judges, when people went to Baal's temple, they still died, right? It's only when they went to the temple of God that they were saved. We need to build on the word of God. We need to stand on the word of God. That is what's going to help us because it is important how you treat people. It is important how you treat God. It is important how you even treat yourself. You are busy doing witchcraft over yourself and it's easy. People think that you can only do witchcraft over, over other people. Remember I was just saying that the exchange that you do with the devil. You thinking I'm going to go do just witchcraft over the other person. You've just exchanged purity and holiness. Your innocence, you've given that over to wickedness. What is wickedness going to do with you? It's going to rampage you. You're going to have diseases. You're going to have nightmares. You're going to have all these problems, yet you're trying to do witchcraft to another person thinking you're winning. But you've lost the thing that was keeping you uh, sane, the thing that was keeping you pure, the thing that was keeping you in the light. You've given that up now. This is what's happening. There's many exchanges in nations, but do not give up the word of God because that is the cornerstone. Stand on the word of God. This is what's going to help. It's going to heal you. Ask the Holy Spirit. Go back to Christ and ask him, Jesus, I don't understand your word. Please baptize me in your spirit. Baptize me in your fire so that you can remove the chaff over me. And give me a new heart if you're so stubborn that, you know, Lord, I, I, I've got all these beliefs. Ask for a new heart. Ask for a new heart and a right spirit so that you can receive his word, fertile heart with a flesh heart instead of a rock hard heart. You can exchange the word for technology. Technology is still going to destroy you. The only thing you're going to find life is in Jesus and what he tells us and what his commands us because they are not for him because his fine is still pure. He's still fine. It's for us to be saved. It's for us to be delivered. So the gifts and talents bit, how we swap over our gifts and talents. Remember the scripture where the Lord says that I give a person one gift, the other one three, the other one five. In the world now, we are seeing an example of that. People have been given gifts. 
And then they go to Satan and they go exchange wickedness for their gifts. With their gifts and talents, they use it to oppress people. You, all you have to do is watch news. It doesn't matter what type of news. It can be political news. It can be celebrity news. You are seeing that live now. We, we can't say, oh, God is lying. It's the truth. This thing really does happen. People do swap over goodness for evil. And they will call evil good and good evil. This has been happening. We're seeing it. We can swap over. And you've now given over. You've signed your, your life away. You've signed your country. You've signed your gifts away. What I saw the Lord saying about that was different ideas of how you can swap your ideas. I mean, to the point where even how we choose careers, you may not go according to the gift and talent God has given you. Some people don't. They'll go for where the money is. But then that money, that whole root corrupts them. There's so many ways we do it where we exchange over, Lord, I'm not going to get money. How am I going to live off my gift and talent? Uh, let me just push that aside and then I'm going to take over this. But then this is now destroying you. You're dying every single day and you don't know how to get back to who you were originally. This is happening daily. What I would say, bring your gifts and talents to the Lord and call and ask him to help you call back what has been lost and what you've given over to the world in darkness. And ask him to be the foundation. Ask him again to be the cornerstone of the gifts and talents he's given you. Ask him to teach you how to use the things he's given you. As much as the world has taught me how to do this, I'm finding no joy. I'm finding no satisfaction. I'm still thirsty. I'm still hungry. There's nothing for me still there. How do I find who I am? And you can only find out your identity in Christ. You can try these things and you'll always go back. You will always go back to, I actually still don't know who I am. How am I going to find out who I am? Go back to the manual. Go back to the one that created you, that knows who you are. And he knows how your gifts and talents are meant to be used. They weren't meant to be used for destruction, to destroy others. If you've already exchanged your gifts for Satan's you know, rabbit out of a hat that hasn't come. If you've already done that, go to the Lord and repent. Ask him to get out of that. Yes, you will lose everything because it's built on evil. It's built on blood. The Lord has to clean your house. Yes, it's okay for that. But at least your life will be saved. And then joy will come back and peace will come back to you. In Jesus' name, I pray for you. Amen.